And good morning, Yamhill County. You are tuned to KLYC right here. You're about to get to the root of it. And this is Ray and Kyle, and we're your garden hosts for the morning. If you have any questions, you can call in live. Uh, be famous on radio. Uh, call Not just radio, we are streaming live on the internet also. If you go to klyc.us, you can get us there. Um, with a c- live video feed, which will be really good for the demonstration that we have coming up, uh, finishing more uh, more on the winter gardening indoors topic that we've been covering for the past two weeks. Uh, yes, we are. We're going we're gonna, to, uh, as I mentioned last week, there's various kinds of mountain seeds, or s- seeds that have some type of mountain or cold weather reference, and these are little guys that need to actually be frozen and thawed a couple of times during the winter time to break the seed coat so that it can start rooting and all of these are identified by the fact that they have some reference to cold weather like uh, uh, mountain poppies or this one is Iceland poppy there's also uh, mountain or alpine seeds it's kind of cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool. Did you like how we switched your mic right there? Now you are very audible. It doesn't sound like you're on the other side of the room. <laughs> it <don't laughs> <sound, laughs> does sound like an old Japanese movie. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a little, little, little different. Um, but uh, one thing that we like to talk about is the weather because it is out there. And uh, one of the big significant things uh, that uh, det- dictates uh, if we can get in the garden or what we do. And it's been pretty cruddy lately, you know, well, just raining. And uh, I don't know how you've been dealing with it, but um, I like the idea of these indoor things that we're putting together. However, it doesn't uh, look like it's going to get any any better in that uh, it, it will be cloudy for this whole rest of this week, looks like for the next 10 days, with chances of showers here's every a, day. Here's a happy thought for you. We're only a week or so away from winter. <laughs> We all know what winter in Oregon is like. Right. <coughs> yeah, no, I absolutely agree. What I have been noticing, though, is it doesn't seem like we're in any danger of a frost, or have been for the past week. And uh, it, it amazed me, because uh, the other night it was clear. Two nights ago, it was, it was really clear outside, and I thought we were going to get some frost. But uh, that hadn't happened. It's uh, it's amazing. Well, they, it wouldn't be a, like a really, really hard frost uh right away anyway because there's uh, most of our super duper freezing stuff comes when you get that Canadian uh, cold air that gets caught in a gorge and then it blows that cold air into the valley and then you have a rain you know and then well, we, we have been talking about the jet stream and it's probably going to be yeah. it's, it's dropping down it's moving its way down so the temperatures are going to get it's colder start spinning it the other way but it's really <laughs> honestly I I like talking about the weather each week because, uh, you know, there, it's it's something to talk about and it does affect us. However, it is just uh, monotonous when it gets to this point because I can look at tonight, uh, there's a 90% chance of rain, right? Okay. And then uh, for this whole week, it looks like 50% chance of rain. How do you like to be the weather predictor in that? <laughs> you know, it could uh, rain, You have to get really philosophical rain. about it. November really is um, Yamhill County's wettest month um, historically. Right. And then for the rest of the winter, it's just gray and splattery. But I have a little four-legged weather station at home. (laughs) And if she runs out to the edge of the carport and stops dead in her tracks, it's raining. (laughs) Yes, the obvious, the the dog. But it is a good topic, uh, weather stations. It's uh, something that we can get into. Um, Because weather stations, they'll give you the, the most accurate uh, that you can get if you've got a good quality one, and that's uh, something that we could probably talk about. But weather stations really important. You you even said that you were in the market for one. I know that I'm in the market for one um, because uh, just uh, setting up a vineyard, you're just going to have to know exactly and precisely what temperatures you're dealing with, and because it just changes too much. I've got a hill behind me, which means that my my temperature's different than the hill on the other side of the hill. Yeah, well, you you and then it's going to be more intense because you'll get. Uh, hit with those southwest winds when it really starts blowing right do a little vine trimming for you right and so you get it gets to be more accurate when you have your own weather station because most of these weather uh when when you get your weather on weather.com or something uh like that 
you know, they're getting theirs from the airport, the local airport. So McMinnville, you know, they're always yeah. broadcasting their, their weather there. And uh, so that's where we get ours. But um, that's not where I live. I don't live at the at the yeah. airport. And it's even worse for Portland. I mean, the people that are in Portland, they get their temperature and readings, all of that, from the airport, which is completely different oh, than varies. downtown. <laughs> It'll vary from three to five degrees just right. inside the city limits. And the wind and the humidity. Yeah, yeah. it's completely different. Um, so, so yeah, uh, weather stations are, are pretty important. They're, they're important for gardeners. Uh, golfers, uh, people who have the golf courses, that's really nice to have them set up. Yeah, you you really don't have to have um, a very elaborate system to be functional for, you know, the backyard gardener. Right. I mean, they can range from 30 bucks to uh, thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, usually the, 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 the sweet spot is about $500 for, for, what <laughs> <laughs> for the good stuff, that uh, the most accurate and uh, uh, stuff you don't have to worry about. Tran- and it transmits wirelessly to your laptop, and but that's the sweet spot. So, um, but you can get them for much cheaper that just tell you the temperature, maybe not as accurate as you like. Those can usually those can sometimes be off by three, five degrees <laughs> themselves. I'm hoping the kids will all chip in ten bucks and and get me the forty nine ninety five one for <laughs> Christmas from LL L. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the gold standard in your yeah. Eyes. That's, that's the gold standard. <laughs> if it, you know, temperature outside and uh, then a, a little barometer is good to have. Mm-hmm. And most of them have that have chips that'll tell you what it's going to do within the next twenty four hours and be really really accurate. Right. So for the basic system, what yeah. you're looking for is temperature, uh, barometric pressure, right. wind speed and direction. Uh, that's it. Rainfall is a good one to have. Um, well, and humidity. Yeah, rainfall. I um, nothing. It's just a completely different sensor. I mean, the more things yeah. that you have, the the more sensors you're going to need. So, uh, rainfall, you'll need like one of those little bucket sensors that get that for yeah. wind. You need one of those uh, anemometers yeah. spinning. I things. could hang it right up in the corner of my upper deck. Right. It'd be fine. Right, and uh, you know, on NOAA's website, they actually have a listing of of the proper ways to set up. Uh, one of these weather stations. And, oh, God, uh, they have to come with instructions for me. For wind, you want to be about seven feet higher than anything else that's around you. Really? That's a good determination, right? I would think that would be the that would be the level that would be affecting you, let's put it that way. Right, because, well, you, and you don't want to, if you're measuring wind, right. you don't want it to be anywhere uh, next to a, a building. No, because if it's up treetop level and you're just out walking in the, you know, in a protected area it's not going to make any it's not going to affect the chill factor for you right and chill factor is uh, an interesting little figure it's uh how would you describe it no i don't oh (laughs) it's a calculation of what wind speed does to temperature uh on the surface of skin and well, and plants. Right. Usually, we we take it into account when it's freezing out there. Right. Then we take in the the wind chill uh, factor. But uh, when you're measuring temperature, it's a really important thing because if you have that brushing off on your sensors, then you might not get the most accurate reading. That's true. And for temperature, what you they they really want it to be taken in the shade, and away from sidewalks and anything else that might affect it. Yeah, not not hanging off the garage out by the driveway. Right. Not yeah. not. Right, exactly. And, and you Although that's that where sometimes. my plants are dying, sometimes <laughs> I'd like to know how hot it is out there. You do see that sometimes. You can see these weather stations, and uh, they're right right on top of a sidewalk or, or right next to the car or the, the, the aluminum siding or something yeah, like no, that. No, 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 no. So you, you, you put it far away. A lot of these stations, it's best to just have them out by themselves. And if they can be solar-powered, that's yeah. really awesome because if you have electric cords hanging from them, apparently rodents enjoy chewing on those and uh you just have big problems oh that'd be uh never mind there are so many things to think about with these weather stations the more complicated you get i mean like i said five hundred dollars 150 yeah. is is probably the baseline that i'm looking at uh where you get the wind speed and uh for me that, that's an that's actual moisture important. right and, and a, a probably a humidity sensor as well for yeah but if all you're looking for is temperature a lot of these also have the ability to be tied into noah's yeah. Uh, we- uh, weather, so you can get their information on your sensors. Well, as as a, a vineyardist, yeah, <laughs> or as a backyard gardener, uh, humidity actually contributes to the uh, the condition of mildew. Yes, you know, 
powdery mildew loves warm, damp temperatures. Right, exactly. And so you could actually have your software configured that if your humidity is at a certain level and if the temperature is at a certain level, you can be alerted so that you know yeah. that you need to spray uh, because you've, you've entered the danger zone for, for the powdery uh, mildew. I'm for not the sure I need one more thing beeping at me. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when I'm hunting for the freaking phone. Uh, set alerts to yeah. have them text you for these things. Yeah. No, no, no. This is the kind of the uh, gardener you want to be, Ray, right? Constantly notified. <laughs> <laughs> Botrytis alerts. Yeah, right. No, but the humidity uh, sensor, it needs to be at least 50 feet from the nearest uh, tree or body of water. That's true, because they hold heat and re- you know, uh, or can reflect but that seems like a far way. I mean, when I think about these sensors and having to set it up, it really does have to be almost down in the middle of a field. Yeah, for that degree of, of preciseness, that's where you want it anyway. You want to set right down, right down there by where you're going to put in your water pond. Right. You know, right. in the middle of the open field. Um, the one I, I used to have, which I don't know, I think it just finally corroded, was I just hung it on the back deck underneath the roof, uh-huh. and out towards the edge of the roof, so it got actually kind of a backyard sensing. Right. And it was really, really pretty accurate. I mean, it was within, like, degrees that I don't care about accurate. Right. Um, and it gave me about a 24 to 36-hour notice if it's going to rain or, you know, that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, the horror stories that horror stories that I've been reading is some of these that you'll you'll go ahead and you'll spend uh, spend money on and, you know, and yeah, some they're not accurate. They're and and yeah, when you are le- off by the three degrees, it's just yeah, it's the, not helpful. The electronics are just bad, and yeah. I don't know at, at that level though. You should be able to uh, you know have some kind of calculation. Uh, yeah, but some of the more uh, uh, trusted some of the more trusted brands include uh, Davis Instruments. Um, that's one of the most highly regarded, I think, uh, Oregon Scientific, um, uh, Pete Brothers, and uh, Rainwise. But uh, the one that I, I hear most often about are the Davis Instrument ones. Those seem to be the most reliable and most accurate. And they also seem to cost a significant amount of money uh, yeah. for that accuracy. But if you're looking for professional, uh, great equipment, you, you can't go wrong with Campbell Scientific, uh, Met One. Um, those are, but those are the big base stations that. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. if you're looking for accuracy, <laughs> or if you're setting up experiments, or if you, you those, those are the ones that you want. But those can, you know, thousands of dollars. Yeah. And I don't know the backyard gardener wants to be that uh, that accurate. Probably not so no, much. No, a lot of uh, weather geeks, uh, I think, at the very least, are going to want that, but uh, mostly for professionals, you know. That's that's like that old joke about uh, the weather rock. Yes. You hang a weather rock in a tree, and if it's wet, it's raining, and if it's dry, it's sunny. <laughs> if it's swinging, the wind is blowing. That is funny. <laughs> you know, why don't we sell weather rocks? We could hey. have a fundraiser and have a, have that description on there. Oh, my God, that would be awesome. <laughs> you just sell your weather rocks. Yeah. Anyway, well, we got lots of fun stuff to talk about today. If you if you hear anything that um, you got a question about, give us a jingle at um, 503-435-1260. That's here at uh, KLYC Radio, and we'll uh, chat with you on the air. It's uh, kind of nice to get it out in the public. That's right, and uh, it is really good to take the calls because it might not. Uh, there might be somebody out there that is has a question that we're not really talking about, uh, but we can easily talk about it. Again, that's 503-435-1260. We're going to jump into a break. When we come back, we've got a nice little demonstration about uh, indoor winter gardening, and then we'll uh, finish up on these uh, weather stations because it's a really good topic to talk about. But uh, we'll take a break right now. I see, 1260 AM. I do not know about you, but mechanical difficulties with my vehicle and computer have a way of putting an instant hole in my bucket. I say, oh, thank goodness for Ray's Auto Service. On these days, Ray's knows how to make my day with their honest, experienced, and full-service automotive repair shop. Ray's Auto Service is there to assist you with all of your vehicle's repair needs, from the simple oil change and wiper blade replacement to the complex engine, transmission, and like repairs. During the month of November, when you bring your auto into Ray's for mechanical 
mechanical service, bring along two canned good items for St. Vincent de Paul's Food Pantry and receive a $10 credit for the first two cans on your mechanical bills at Ray's Auto Service. Donations of canned goods is also being accepted at Ray's. Ray's Auto Service is located on the corner of 3rd and Galloway in downtown McMinnville. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 and also on Saturdays for your convenience from 9 to 1. Pete Talbot here again for Cannon Beach Conference Center with a great idea for your family this Thanksgiving. How about four days and three nights starting off with an incredible Thanksgiving feast followed by excellent Bible teaching by Dr. Ron Allen from Dallas Theological Seminary. Plus tons of fun and terrific programs for the kids from nursery through high school. A truly memorable Thanksgiving at Cannon Beach. Call for more information. 1-800-745-1546 or go online at cbcc.net. It's YCAP Food Raiser time at Rice Furniture and Appliance. Help feed Yamhill County and get a good night's sleep. Bring in non-perishable food items and save. Save on all Beauty Rest mattresses, Beauty Sleep, Beauty Rest, True Energy, and Comfort Pedic. Come in for the Fall Mattress Triple Bonus event. Bonus one: free Turkey certificate with Beauty Rest and Comfort Pedic mattress sets. Bonus two: free delivery, free setup, and free removal. Bonus three, for every food item donated, save $5 off up to 10%. Hey, now is the time to buy that mattress you've been wanting and help feed Yamhill County. Because it's more than a better night's sleep, it's you fully charged. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday, Saturday till 7, close Sundays, next to Lowe's. So come and get your new Beautyrest mattress at Rice Furniture and Appliance, where quality and service mean the most and cost the least. And... Don't forget the food. This is Homer Farley Day on AM 1260 KLYC. And we're back right here on KLYC. You're listening to The Root of It, your weekly Yamhill County Master Gardener show. I am Kyle Hunter. Ray is over there. And uh, we have been discussing so far the weather here in Yamhill County as well as how to keep track of it uh, for the Backyard Gardener. And uh, we've been talking about weather stations. And these are small little electronic things that uh, that will tell you what the temperature is, what the wind speed is, and uh, basically anything you want. But how do you go ahead and pick one out? We've been talking about the uh, less expensive models up to the more expensive <laughs> models. <laughs> but basically... Basically, all you want is something that'll do the temperature, uh, and uh, and uh, well, I think you want temperature and barometric pressure. Is right. really helpful. Those are the ones that come basic on everything, uh, you know, because you can get those small ones that are about the size of a calculator, and that's exactly what they'll probably have. Um, but uh, wind speed is also helpful, and rainfall and humidity. Nice add-ons, though. Uh, ultraviolet intensity and something that'll will. Uh, do the soil moisture and temperature as well really? as lighting. These are things that, that could be helpful if you were uh, not only for the backyard gardener who wants to take things to the extreme, but maybe a farmer. Uh, you need yeah. to know the soil temperature. Uh, absolutely. You need to uh, cause seed. Um, seed germination. Seed germination, right. Uh, what we're, what we're going to talk about this morning is kind of like uh, that. Right, where you absolutely need to know the temperature. But... On this little type of thing, this is uh, this is called winter sown. It's a term that was uh, developed back in about 2006 for uh, a style of gardening where you sprinkle your seeds in the fall. Uh, you do have to pick the type of you have to know what you're planting because it has to be the type of seed, which requires freezing and thawing during the course of the winter to crack its little shell and actually make its root hop out in February. So this is uh this is an easy way to do this and get a good start on your your uh your annual flowers. So the, yeah, so the winter gardening that we've been talking about for the past 2 weeks uh um you're talking about winter sowing. Yeah, now. this yeah, this is an this, and this is another Saturday afternoon project with the kids, but it'll kind of stretch it out for them, which is nice because uh we were eating uh you and I we were eating lunch at uh, at a at a place and uh, you ask them to go ahead and get you one of these uh, to-go plastic things that has a clear clear top and the black bottom, and uh, you didn't put any food in it. You just asked them for it, and they gave it to you. Yeah. And th- the amazing things about these to-go things 
is you find them everywhere, and every restaurant seems to have yeah, them. I but I look at them, and it seems like such a big expense uh, and overhead for these restaurants to have to have. But but if they don't have it, what are the options? I mean, everybody right. wants something to go. Oh, for sure, it is probably an expense. It's you know probably I I would. I don't. You can't even guess it. Has. Some of these no. are really nice. It's as though they they get the zip. These should still be less than a dime, though. Right? Yeah, but uh, but they're really great for the home gardener because yep. they make perfect seed starting uh, apparatus. And surprisingly enough, most of them are like top rack dishwasher safe uh, for one time through. I mean, it's a pretty hard plastic. At one time, maybe, and then yeah. uh, and then it just might start melting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just run it through a, a cold soapy cycle and then be done with it or just you know hit her with a sponge really good uh, they're convenient size they, they'll fit right on a windowsill just fine uh, to get them started or if it's a, a really one of these cold weather annual seeds and you know where these I mean you see these in your garden all the time it's where something comes up that you didn't plant it like that, that tomato plant that got rotted my tomatoes yes absolutely you know, that, tomatoes. You know that type of thing uh, so you, to get them started, uh, you just take your tray, clean it out, poke some holes in the bottom and the lid for drainage and transpiration, the exiting of the air in the growing process. Because if you don't do that, then you're uh, you know you, then you've got yeah. uh, excess humidity, well, and then that'll be the the mildew and the rot that'll come with that. These little guys, you can even uh, just put them out on a picnic table on the back patio and forget about them. That's the oh my crazy God. thing about them. Yeah, just set them up on a couple of sticks so they actually got drainage. And uh, just leave it out there, and the seeds go through the natural freezing and thawing process. But they're already in this nice little growth medium. They have this nice little insulator cap on, so even if it got really cold, you might go out and put them in a garage or How something. How cold do these seeds need to get? Uh, does it, these, does it these these need to actually freeze. Freeze, absolutely. You know, so under thirty two degrees. Yeah, twenty eight to twenty six to twenty eight degree soil temperature. I see. Yeah, and that's the mechanism behind them. Uh, it doesn't. You, can you stick them in the freezer and, and get no, the same result? No, that's I learned from master gardeners. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh, see, there we go. Yeah, if you want to speed this process up, yeah, you can learn not all. wait until the freeze comes. You, you can it. learn way too much about <laughs> propagation of seeds. Stick them in the freezer for a day. Some things they do recommend. Uh, bulbs are one thing that you can go ahead and freeze for a while to to jump start them. Like if you wanted to um, make paper whites, you know, those little white uh, bell-like flowers, you know, in a cute little crystal dish mm-hmm. those you would you would probably freeze before you planted them in like uh, late september early october and then you that's how they get those cute little white plants interesting yeah is that you know they do require some cold right and they're you know fun smelling things anyway um what we're going to try in here is the thing that's called iceland poppies and again iceland is your clue there it'll it'll overwinter just fine uh then there's alpine this and mountain this and those types of things are are seeds that do require some some freezing in their maturation process poppies are usually found in mountainous regions anyway so they they enjoy the cold yeah uh, there's most of the, for the most part and they're they're really nice to to look at yeah and they're very durable these guys uh, hopefully will be about 18 inches tall so you know wow that's pretty tall yeah they're going to replace the zinnias this year. <laughs> okay, so let's stick these things in okay. dirt. How does that happen? Well, we're going to take and... Um, did you read the label? Th- I uh, did. Okay, good. Yeah, actually, I did. Because that's something that we make sure that we do here is, uh, is it doesn't take a whole lot of time, but you gain a whole lot of information. Just read the back of the label. Now, these little guys are just minute. They're smaller than a dog flea, actually. Which is usually what you find with these yeah. kinds of flowers is these are so hard to deal with, you're going to get them... Um, stuck in the crack of your hands under your fingernails well i'm going to put a few in my hands so i can actually see what i got all right let's see here uh we'll go ahead and uh we'll we'll uh move that over and these there little guys they're, they're surface planters you just you just kind of sprinkle them around on the surface and then uh, because when you do eventually add water they're gonna they're gonna sink down water will get covered over them right and you're you're hoping the water goes right on through right 
so small I didn't even see you sprinkle them. No. I don't believe that it and showed the up on co- the high definition camera yeah, that we have. They're showing up on the <laughs> dirt too. And then the rest of them I'll just save. I'll so how many did you put in there? Do you think? Oh, uh, probably. That was a that was twenty five or thirty. Twenty five or thirty in yeah. this uh, this small little to go container. And then we'll we'll see what pops up. And then right now. No, no. <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like one of those cartoons where you just go ahead and throw some water on yeah. it, uh, stick fast it in the freezer, and we'll be right back from yeah. the break, and there it is. Yeah, fast forward to May. They t- you know, they took one out of the greenhouse. Right. So so do you think that this is something that you could uh, you could grow indoors? You could stick it yeah. in the freezer, cause the germination to happen, and then in, oh, what, two weeks you have, you have nice little sprouts growing. Um, if it were in the windowsill where it was warm? Maybe. M- maybe. Maybe. Uh, it might it might happen, I would say, uh, three to five weeks. Cause it's one of the things happens. that you miss during the winter is the, is the yeah. flowers. Well, that's you know, it's something you, that's why we're we're talking about winter gardening is you don't have to quit gardening just because it got to be fall. Right. You know, you can still practice on small plots. Right. You know. Well, so well, I think we're going to use this as an experiment, right? Yeah, this um, is strictly experimental. Uh, I think that you need to take that home, stick it in the yep. freezer. Then, oh, then. actually, I already froze the seed. You're ahead of the game. Yeah. So you just took the the seed packet and stuck that in the stuck freezer. Stuck in the freezer overnight. Ah, that's so much easier than sticking a yeah. a pot of dirt <laughs> into the freezer. Yeah. It's a whole lot tidier. <laughs> good, good idea, uh, Ray. So. So that we're gonna we'll we'll go ahead and we'll revisit that in a couple of weeks and uh, hopefully we will we'll see, see what some, we get. some um, kind of result. We, sh- we should we should see green hair by the first of uh, March show. Oh yeah. I mean, no, I'm looking for something sooner. Not gonna happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> not underneath the grow lights. Not no, underneath any of that. I don't think so. Oh my goodness. We probably could because then I could just go. Well, ahead that's what I'm saying. I think that's something that we should do. We should see if we can grow these poppies right here uh, in 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 the okay. winter. I, I don't know. I'm just what else you get? Are you really going to wait until March? I don't have those kinds of patience. Oh, I'll just make another one for March. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, no, that's that's you know, this isn't the only one in existence. I see. Right. Yeah, that's why I saved the rest of the seed over here. Nice. And then I'll I'll put those out on the picnic table on the patio, and it it'll be kind of under the shelter of the deck so but it'll get direct sunlight you know so we'll see what happens any other plantings that no. uh, that you do like that um well i i do save over fuchsias and things like that oh really really do, now do fuchsias need to be frozen do their seeds need no to be frozen no no like they that? just no, need to be put so. in a garage yeah you trim them down to about six inches tall and just put them in the garage and no, I've done that. You know, water them once a month. Yeah, no, I've done that to my fuchsias, and uh, yeah, I've cut them too short. I'm oh. pretty sure I'll do that again this yeah. year, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, if you leave them about oh six seven inches long, you, you're pretty sure to have some little uh, buds in the stem out there. That, uh, and then about the first of March, you go ahead and start bringing them outside, you know, and then put them back in at night for about oh four to six weeks, and the suckers will hop right out of the bucket for you nice <laughs> nice so windowsill uh yep anything else no nope. uh, anything else we've got in the windowsill garden uh so so far i gave to, away to the herbs you, oh yeah uh, i discovered that in my house i do not have a sunlit window except for the one in the family room, room that's yeah. up about 10 feet in the air <laughs> no, <that's laughs> it's not so real true. handy for but you've got that big sliding glass door that's right there i guess yeah and uh, remember that four-legged uh, weather station i got oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's also a marker <laughs> oh yeah she could throw potting soil 10 feet oh, okay yeah, uh, well that's good okay so, that so we did we, we put uh, uh uh an herb garden in the windowsill um, we we can do this yeah. with the windowsill. Yep, absolutely. Um, um, and yeah, I would just put it in the windowsill for. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'll just I'll put, I'll find some place to put it, and uh, probably underneath my grow light out in the garage. See, that's what I'm thinking. I think that that would be really awesome to see. Yeah. After what it does uh, uh, for grow light. Yeah, my actually it's it's just a neon shop light, and I went and got the the um light bar holder down at restore for two bucks yeah doesn't have to be anything too elaborate no yeah. and you can buy neon tubes for a quarter i mean come on right 
<laughs> yeah. But it, it works really well mm-hmm. and, and has in the past. And I'll, I'll give this one a little test and see what we can sprout up. Yeah, I'm curious, and I can't wait to, to see what we have. Um, stay, tuned stay tuned for, for the for sprouting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, so why don't we, since we were talking about uh, the some little tips that you got from the Master Gardener program, uh, let the uh, listeners and viewers know that we do have the uh, Yamhill County Master Gardeners classes that are coming up, and it's this time uh, that we register because to become a, an OSU Master Gardener, you have to take uh, classes, you have to do a certain amount of volunteer hours, and uh, to learn how to freeze right. your seeds. So, <laughs> so this is, is great information to know, but the classes that we do uh, offer to become a volunteer happens only once a year. Registration for that only happens once a year. Right. And we're uh, in the midst of the registration to become the volunteer because classes start in January. Yeah, there's there's already about, I think, 15 people on the list or something like that. Uh, oh yeah anyway yeah it, the classes start January 9th 2014 and it's every Thursday for 13 weeks so it is it is a bit of a commitment but it goes from like 9 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon at the worst uh, practically every other week there's a half a day schedule that you just do on your computer at home right and it's uh the, the classes are going to take place one Thursday, one Thursday a, a week. One thir- yeah, there's only one Thursday in a week. Right, the, one Thursday a week, the, the classes are going to take place. For 13 <laughs> weeks. I'll get it out right yet. <laughs> Swear to God. Right, and uh, those take place at the Extension Office uh, down there on 2050 Northeast Lafayette in McMinnville. And, um, yeah, we have the online classes are also available because it is kind of uh, – most of the people are grown adults that uh, might yeah. have other things that are going on. They can't really commit to uh, one. Well, Thursday you have a regular work week. schedule right, or anything, exactly. you know, or child care may be an issue because you'd, you'd want to give yourself a couple hours a night to just putter on the computer. Right, exactly. And it'd be a nice escape. Just mommy's busy, daddy's so, in the computer room. So some of the classes are available online for the uh, for right. that convenience. Um, but other than that, you are getting. What uh, twenty intensive uh, classes on uh, oh, at plant least. plant identification, uh, insect identification? It's um, over sixty hours of cl- actual class time, right? Either on the computer or in the actual class. Right, you learn about pesticides and herbicides, uh, how to apply them, which ones to apply. Um, yeah. Everything that you could uh, possibly want to know. You also learn about uh, the volunteer activities going to uh, farmers markets working the uh the office so when people do have questions they come into the extension office and that's uh, yeah. what we're there for is is for answering the questions yeah the the question desk which also i mean we have email um and telephone recordings um and just direct call and you can just drop off uh like if you have a, a mildewed plant and you're not sure what it is or why it's turned black. You can just put it in a Ziploc bag and drop it off at the extension office at 2050 Lafayette Avenue. Uh, anytime between 8 and 5, and you fill out a form that uh, gives you name and, and how you want to be contacted, either phone or email. And somebody will look at it and get back with you if there isn't somebody in the office that day. Mm-hmm. And that's what the volunteers are for. Yeah. Is, is, uh, they, they go ahead and they take what they have learned, and if they don't know the answer... Um, then they know where to get the answer from. And that's really what a lot of these classes are about is because there, there's a lot of information there, that big uh, binder that you get that has uh, every topic in there and all of the information in it. still have mine. Um, it's really daunting to have to go through. But as you volunteer and work at farmer's markets and, uh, and work at the help desk, uh, you learn so much more about the plants. I mean, even doing the, the, the radio show here, I've, I've learned – so much uh, f- uh, more because you're you're studying it more in depth. Well, people ask us questions, and we have to give answers that are actually certified by Oregon State. We can't just make this stuff up. And that's what we don't even on this radio no. show. We don't. Uh, we we take the uh, stuff that uh, has been research and fact based from the Oregon State uh, University and other extension uh, services uh, that throughout the country. Um, but everything is is fact based, research based. And uh, that's one of the things that, as a volunteer, you learn how to 
get that information um not not just for the the public out there that needs to know it but also for yourself because that's really probably why you're volunteering is because you want to learn more information about gardening uh you if you're out there listening you might want to go grab a piece of paper and a pencil because we're going to give you some information here and oh just before the next break oh yeah sure and probably after the next break um, so get, get a piece of paper and a pencil. Be ready. It'd be about no oh, three or four minutes down the road, and we'll give you the emails and the addresses and the phone numbers so you can actually write them down. Which is really helpful. It comes and in real handy. Yeah, it is, and uh, which is a good. Uh, this is probably a good time to throw out the uh, website address if you want to catch a streaming. It's klyc dot us. If you have any questions, give us a call here five zero three four three five twelve sixty. Um, that's the in the studio where we love to uh, talk about what's going on in your garden. Absolutely, and actually, Dave's getting pretty good at this uh, uh, filming stuff. Are you kidding me? We've got two cameras set yeah. up. We're switching back and forth. The um, we, it's just like real TV. And what's really great is also it's, almost it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's it gets thrown up on YouTube right after the show. So yeah. uh, if you feel like you missed something. You can uh, go on to YouTube, uh, search for uh, KYC to the root of it, and there it is. Can they like or not like? You can you can yeah, like you, it. You can not like it. Uh, but they can't like really it. leave comments, can they? Oh, like? they can absolutely leave comments. It's oh, a YouTube can. page. Right? Ray, I think you've got to visit the YouTube. I, I don't huh. think that you've watched enough. Well, no, YouTube's. no, I did watch. Our, I did watch last week's. I did watch last week's yeah. too, and it was exciting to watch um, because the colors were really vibrant on the uh, on on the display. I was we quite surprised. Right. It really is a good recording. I know. I watched it on on my phone actually because I can watch that on my phone. You can't stream it on the phone just yet because it requires flash. However, on uh, YouTube, I can watch our show on my phone. Made me remember to comb my hair. <laughs> <laughs> made me second thing. Uh, it made me think. Well, maybe I should. Put yeah, white on spikes today. are not in. <laughs> <laughs> no chewing the gum or anything no, like that's that. It's like either. quite patent leather slip-ons. Right. Well, why don't we jump into a break real quick, and uh, so we can fix our hair, put our makeup on, and uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and when we come back, we'll throw out those numbers there uh, for for those of you that are interested in maybe learning more information about the volunteering arm of the OSU. Uh, extension services which is the master gardeners program i'll give you one right now if you don't catch this on the air you don't get it written down in time call us at 503-435-1260 and we can give it to you that's right so uh we'll go ahead and we'll the addresses the the addresses uh we'll go ahead and jump into that break right now is that okay ray you betcha okay. let's go uh you're listening to the root of it right here on klyc 1260 a.m High School Sports is brought to you by Davison Auto Parts in McMinnville. High school athletes strive to be the best they can be, and so does Davison Auto Parts. Davison Auto Parts, 1717 North Baker Street in McMinnville, takes pride in providing customers with the best quality parts and personal service. As a Napa Auto Parts dealer, Davison Auto Parts has fast access to an inventory of more than 400,000 parts. Davison Auto Parts. Baker Street, McMinnville, a trusted partner in keeping your vehicle safe on the road. If you're involved in a vehicle crash, you need to take your car or light truck to a repair center that will fix it right the first time. The philosophy of J&W Car Star Collision Repair Center in McMinnville is relax. We'll take it from here. Roger Fowler stands by his crew's reputation. J&W Car Star Collision Repair Center, 1100 Northeast Lafayette in McMinnville. Do you feel good? Do you want to feel better? You would be amazed at how much better you feel when you're in shape. More stamina, more energy, clearer thinking, better health. Snap Fitness in McMinnville is there to help you get in shape and stay there. In the coming days, you're going to hear from people who use Snap Fitness, like Megan Scioli. I had a heart condition four years ago, and the doctor uh, told me I needed to lose 20 pounds in a year's time, told me to get some exercise. So I started Zumba. And I've lost almost 100 pounds doing Zumba and just taking care of my what I eat. In fact, Megan now teaches Zumba at Snap Fitness in McMinnville near Albertsons on Keck Road. You should always consult your physician if you have health concerns before starting a fitness program. Megan and others are ready to help you get into shape at Snap Fitness. Snap Fitness offers classes 24-7 with showers, modern equipment, and no contracts. Ready to welcome you. Snap Fitness, McMinnville. Yeah. 
And we're back right here on KLYC. This is To the Root of It, uh, your weekly Yamhill County Master Gardener radio show. Yeah, this is the time for you to reach over and grab that pen by the phone. Oh, that's right. We're going to give out some information. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yep. Uh, and uh, because we've been talking about our uh, volunteer classes that we right. have coming up that start in January, if you want more information about that, uh, the best website to go to is not just for this information, um, but also for the Yamhill uh, Master Gardeners, uh, extension.oregonstate.edu slash Yamhill. And that's the extension office right. for Yamhill County. If you have questions, uh, that's the best place to go. But they also have all of the links to us as Master Gardeners and uh, uh, other things. And if you have any uh, any questions, you give them a phone call, right? We go right, ahead and right. Go do that. F- uh, 503-434-7517 is the main, de- main desk if you want to uh, let them know you're bringing over a sample or something. And then the Master Gardener phone number for recorded questions, or if there's somebody working in the office... That's 503-434-8918. And that uh, um, will also get you a place to leave your messages. And, and people check those probably t- oh, two or three times a week anyway. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we got a blinking it's light. It's a volunteer organization. Oh, okay. Our volunteer. Um, we have a blinking light. That means that we should be uh, coming up on uh, good morning. No, that is not the button. You know, I'm going to get for these the buttons. Button. Don't oh, go away. Yeah. Don't go away. I know you're there. Yep. So uh, as we figure out uh, this caller, there they are. And it looks like um, I have the volume up. And are you there, caller? No. It looks no. like we're not. Uh, we what? slipped away. No. Uh, well, you know what's really great about this is I can see that they're still there, so they're probably listening to me right now in some way, shape, or form. What's this fool up to? <laughs> yep. Um, well, why don't we just uh, throw out one more website address really quick, and it's going to be YamhillCountyMasterGardener dot org. That's our all master- one word, right? Yamhill County Master Gardener. Yeah. Dot Gardener org. is singular. That's right, because there's only one. Well. it's yeah, I'm not sure. What, it's just the way it worked out. But anyway, that gives you access to our schedule of events. It gives you uh, access to the class as well. Um, you can also use it to look up information. You can access OSU's vast online library for answering. And that's where we get a lot of our information. Or that's where we have to start. So anyway... Uh, Caller, would you try that again? <laughs> I know. As much as we appreciate calls, we, we just need you to try that one more time, and I'm sure I'll, I'll get the right click. Testing, testing. Anybody <laughs> home out there? <laughs> it's so perfect. It's so perfect. Did I mention that we're streaming live on the Internet? Oh. At klyc.us. Good um, morning, <laughs> Russia! Right. Awesome. Um, so we, we uh, just to wrap up the volunteer uh, part of that, uh, you know, you, you've got the website addresses. And uh, that should uh, that uh, you know you, you've got the website addresses. I enjoy and hearing myself that, over uh, again. And uh, here we go. Pardon the technical the, issues. No, we don't even pardon the technical don't we? issues oh, okay. because what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Willows. If we can't get this caller up right now, good morning, caller. Morning. Good ah, morning. Bingo. Do you see how amazing that is? Technology. Thank you for your patience, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> I really do. Absolutely. Thank you. What's your name? Uh, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. My name's Ray. What's your name? And you're Hello, listening to, to the root of it. So you did get to where you're headed now. And you're listening to, to the root of it. What's your, qu- what's your question this morning? I'm curious on what I need to do to winterize strawberries. I have a bed of um, probably, tw- uh, it's a raised bed, and I have probably 20 strawberries in there. Ah, are they, and they're ever bearing, like they gave you strawberries all summer long? Yes, they're TriStar. TriStar, okay. Uh, the best thing to do for them to get them ready, because the leaves are going to, if we get that nasty 20-degree day, or 26-degree day with a real heavy wind, so the leaves are going to freeze. That's okay, as long as you protect, protect the root crown. And you okay. can do that with... Uh, Oh, like 
mulch, compost. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend bark dust because the acid. Right. This is a really good question because it's uh, it's something that I'm dealing with right now, too, because I have the leaves that are still green, and it looks like the strawberries are still growing and still being pretty productive, and it's not something that I – and I kind of want to move them, and I don't know if uh, that uh, will immediately kill them either. But uh, it seems like uh-huh. – I, I expected these strawberries to be dead by now, Ray. Why aren't they? Well, even though we had the – we did have an actual killing frost back a few weeks ago. And the strawberries, like like hers, um, are very durable. They are more in the perennial variety. They, they'll last all winter if you protect the crowns. And if, it, uh, if they're real big and bushy and the leaves get all brown and yucky, then you go ahead and cut them off to prevent disease getting to the crown, but leave, leave a stem, you know, a couple inches long. And then just cover them with some f- uh, old leftover peat moss is perfect. Or is it okay to use um, pine shavings, or is that too heavy? Pine? You mean like pine needles? Pine shavings, like I use um, in the barn, those kinds of things. Pine shavings. Cedar shavings? Really well, pine shavings? Cedar, they're just but they're pine. Pretty fine, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm, pine. Uh, to some degree. Because that'd be kind of like putting a... a Wood chip on there, right? Right, but I'd Almost I'd want to like check the pH of your soil before you did that to make sure that it was uh, um, pretty neutral, if possible. And this time of the year, it's it's getting time to uh, probably have to start thinking about that because we have had a lot of rain. But what you're thinking, Ray, is you just throw compost on there, just yeah, yeah, uh, like oh, like, okay, yeah, just like the stuff they have over there at the the recycle center. Mm-hmm. It's like twenty nine dollars a oh, yard. The wow area. Yeah, yeah, yeah just something like okay, that. Well, that's that completely that's neutral and, and and very low acid, and it'll just protect them from from severe frost. It's a, about a two inch insulation is all you need. If the little stems oh. are still sticking up out of it, they're fine. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for calling, Cheryl. Oh. Okay, great. Have a great day. You Bye. too. Bye bye. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Okay. So um so that was great. Uh the the strawberries. You too. Because uh, okay. When you're so, when you're um, thinking so about the frost, uh, all you need to do is take care because of uh two okay. inches, when you're, right? When you're thinking uh, about the frost, yeah. all you need uh, to do is take care of because they're all they're going to uh, sprout all new uh stems and leaves from the crowns next spring anyway or or as soon as it starts um they're one of our first berries that that come into the season and then like hers they <clears throat> they produce good berries all summer long. You can never run out of berries. Right. <laughs> you can never. Oh, and that's, they, they produce all summer long. Mine, I think, produced, uh, you know, once, and then they, they just stayed green. And it looks like a really nice ground cover to, to have out there. And even right now, it's, it's probably the only green thing that's in my garden right now with those leaves. I, I have a very good friend that, to what that, we call uh, big squat basket, which have he keeps over his berries in half fruit. wine barrels out on the back deck. Right. And, um, uh, really doesn't do much to him except give him a little fertilizer after he you know in the late spring when he wants them you know start really putting on stuff as soon as they start sprouting but all he does is just bury them in a little bark du- you know in the compost and the compost the dust. not bark yeah. dust no yeah because that would be a little bit more than you wouldn't need but um yeah good good topic with the strawberries um we can move a little bit over to the willow tree yeah, uh, because that is something that I, I wanted to talk about. Because one of the things that I had heard about the willow is that you don't want it in your backyard. You don't want it around because, uh, well, for s- some reasons like the way that the roots grow, and uh, and but I have this really nice willow tree, and then we hear about the you look at the weeping willows, and they have these this majestic feel to them, and they look really nice. But the thing that uh, is preventing me from planting the willow is because of these these roots that are supposed to do a lot of damage. Uh, as long as you don't go, <coughs> excuse me, don't go out and plant it in your your sewer drain field. That's a, that's a kind of a real quick no no. <laughs> right, because the because the roots are large, fibrous, and uh, it's, it's a term is called stolen. And uh, when when the roots are stolen, then that means that they're they spread out and grow grow near the surface, and then you get these runners that just uh, pop right out. 
I, I picture uh, planting a willow tree by your koi pond and having it throw a root over into the <laughs> koi pond and start drinking. <laughs> That's They're what you need. enormous water absorbers. Oh, okay. They're, they seek it out and will will get into any kind of a drain line. If they can find a crack in a weld, you're, you're done. Right. They can make those because cracks, Because once too. it gets in, it just goes... <laughs> Because and, those and those roots, they do they yeah. spread really far, yeah. and uh, they're they're hard to uh, you know get to to get a hold of. Now, one good thing about willows that I I did find through doing a little extra research on it is if you have a place out in your backyard or your back property or anything that has too much standing water, you can plant um, a willow. And it will help absorb that during the winter season. So, if, you know, back in the corner of the lawn where you got a bad slope to it or something. And that's exactly what I'll probably end up using these uh, willows for is, is exactly that. If I have an area where uh, I just, you know, the water is just standing there and I can't bulldoze uh, a nice swale out of there, yeah. just stick some uh, willow trees. Another thing is poplars are good for that, too. Yeah. Um, something that just wants that water and sucks it in. And the willow tree, that what you're picturing, what I usually picture is like those golf courses, and they have that big water feature. Oh, and, yeah. And, 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 and then the a willow, just that single willow tree the weeping over. The ten-foot hanging right. willows that droop majestically towards the reflecting pool. <laughs> <laughs> See, you've got the image, too. Okay, you know yeah, exactly sir. what I'm dealing with. It. Yeah, I've yeah. played out from underneath that tree enough times. And so, <laughs> and so they look really they look really beautiful, and, and uh, that's what they what, um, what I think of when I see them. But their wood is also used for fuel uh, and Erosion control, which is what we usually what we're talking about here mostly, but basket making and uh, windbreaks and charcoal also. But basket making is what they were used for back in the day. Willow was used as firewood because it grew so quick. Right, it was a natural replenishing uh, resource. Um, I've got a little bit of willow wood in my in my wood pile for this winter, mm-hmm. just for the fun of it. Unfortunately, uh, it was a curly willow. <laughs> It's kind of sappy, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. When it dries out, it's real light. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. it burns really, really clean. I see. Um, but what I was given, they just said willow. I, I didn't realize that it was curly <laughs> willow, and them suckers okay. are curly to the core. Right, right. Not There are there are thousands no, of species of willows. Split like a corkscrew. You, <laughs> right. you I know exactly what hour. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think I would probably hire my grandson next time. Oh, yeah. That was that was poor poor form on my part. Well, I think there are different there are, there are better woods uh, better suited uh, for for burning than than the willow. But the flowers, the cat skins, I think that's probably another thing that sticks out for. Well, they too. feed a lot of different uh, butterflies, bees, uh, cross pollination. Uh, they they pr- feed half the insect kingdom so you're going to get a good uh, butterfly draw if you've yes. got uh, if you've got some nice willows out there during their flowering some butterflies actually require willows to uh, lay their eggs mm, oh yeah i think that i i'll have the name that. of that butterfly next week uh, <laughs> sure you will <laughs> no uh, really they I'm do sure you will um, but yeah, the the and the weeping willow in particular, that's the one that's known for the the drooping branches. And as far as being symbolized, um, you know, we we think of the weeping willow as being sad uh, for some reason or another, and uh, not so in uh, and that's for for most Western civilization, but not so in China, which is basically where the willow comes from. And and in China, uh, after originating there, it, uh, it represents vitality and growth and rebirth as well as immortality and that's because of the way the roots just grow they just uh, stick out there so it's uh it's representative of, of something completely different than what we might uh hear in in the western side of the world there's Think like of. there's like uh four or five hundred varieties of willow though oh yes and uh you can you can pick out species that grow from like six inches tall to 60 feet tall well the weeping willow i mean if you if you've got it in the right place it can grow six to eight feet per year yeah it's just incredible isn't that yeah you want to fill something in in a corner in a hurry (laughs) (laughs) real quick before the kids go to high school the tree is grown (laughs) you'll be hanging a swing in it before the kids start preschool (laughs) it's really (laughs) fast yeah i mean that's a it's a really fast growing one again the poplar for me does that uh also um uh 
but you got to be careful with these because not only are they destroying the the roots capable of destroying the uh, uh, pipes in and uh, they can also destroy the sidewalks because they'll grow up underneath the sidewalks. Oh, frequently you'll be you know because we have uh, so many trees on the common area or on the roadways around McMinnville. I mean, it's like Tree City, right? Uh, and once in a while, the wrong tree gets planted in the wrong place, and then you 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 know. Uh, destroy the sidewalk. The yeah. curbs will split. You can, you know, there's one over there by my house where the roots, you can see where it's growing across the street. I mean, just it's walking just like around. A freaking gopher. Walking around uh, residential Portland, you know, in those older areas oh, where yeah. the sidewalks just go up three up feet. Up the hill, <laughs> down the hill. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's so a bad thing to have the willow planted by the sidewalk. Um, but uh, in the open areas, they, they're really perfect for that. And uh, um, medicinal uses, did you know that they were... Uh, this is the thing that I've often known about that. that really? Uh, it's aspirin. The bark is, uh, is an aspirin supplement, and often it was used as such uh, back in the day. That's how you got your aspirin. Um, it contains salicin, which is acetosalic acid, which is aspirin. Yes. I'll be darned. Yes. Um, so it's good for you like that it also has additional antioxidants uh antiseptic so you got a cut they'd go scrape a willow tree and and stick the bark on it and uh you'd be good to go uh so it made a great antiseptic and uh immune boosting properties i don't know what that is but uh oh I, that's I, your I'm looking natural for a little bit more science than yeah, than we, that we won't get it we're not supposed to talk that oh, right, exactly. We haven't had. We got to stick to a stuff with that's roots on why it. Why I put the footnote in there? Like oh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But but it was. Uh, it, its research has suggested that the willow bark is effective at treating headaches, lower back pain, uh, and osteoporosis. But those are things that aspirin is also known to treat. Just don't plant it by the house. Don't plant it in the sewer field. Right. Uh, do plant it in a low spot if you want to absorb water. Uh, out in a far corner of the garden bed, it uh, makes a nice appearance tree. You can always, you know, if you get a nice tall willow, you can always put your chair underneath of it in the summertime. Right. And uh, when you do get it full grown, it's uh, there are a couple of craft uses that you can use for it. And uh, we, we talked about the wicker basket. And before plastic was invented, uh, the, the willow wicker work is what was actually used to make many oh, containers. Crying out loud. I know. Isn't that so interesting? That's fabulous. <laughs> if, if we had more time, I'm sure I could yeah, get, get let's into go it. Chop some willow, right? Exactly. I could get more into all of the craft uses uh, that you could get into it. Uh, cricket bats, yeah, actually made of willow. Start a fire for the football game this afternoon. I think it's going to be an appropriate <laughs> use of my willow. <laughs> right. Exactly. But we'll go ahead and we'll wrap things up this week for your uh, to the root of it uh, weekly show. Um, next week, we'll be back here talking about more gardening aspects, talking about the weather here in Yamhill County. And uh, if you have any calls, uh, any questions for us about that, just go ahead and give us a call next week. Write the number down, 503-435-1260. Uh, strawberries were talked about uh, today. Uh, we talked about uh, weather stations. Right. Who knows what we're going to talk about another, next week. Another window another window pot okay well you know what we've we'll got see how, we'll see how this goes we'll see where winter I'll, gardening I'll give takes it a us. shot sure um but uh, other than that uh, thanks for listening thanks for watching you can catch the uh if you want to watch this on the web it's on the youtube uh koyc.us has a link to it um yeah anything else you want to say before we leave ray nope thanks thank you to our caller this morning and um, we wish you all happy gardening that's right, and uh, you're listening to KLYC, 1260 AM. Brewery is celebrating 20 years of serving you the best times and locally produced food in Yamhill County. Golden Valley Restaurant and Brew Pub at 980 Northeast 4th Street in McMinnville is local, locally brewed refreshment, fresh local produce. Steak specials every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Golden Valley Restaurant and Brew Pub opens.